I'm standing at the front of my newly acquired 1980 Mercedes 300D. This is a diesel. And these are the cars, folks, that have been known to go a million miles. That's right, a million miles. You may see that in ads like on Craigslist or on eBay. Yeah, man, this diesel will go a million miles. Now, I'm not going to disagree that this car wouldn't go a million miles, but I think when people hear that, it does a disservice to the owners because I think owners think, well, if it's going to go a million miles, why bother to do anything to it? They'll go a million miles, folks, but you have to maintain them. And what I want to share with you is three ways that you can kill one of these diesel engines slowly. Now, you probably know a couple of ways to kill it rapidly, but killing it slowly, well, this can kind of sneak up on you. Now, number one is something I'm sure you're all aware of. If you don't do oil changes, if you don't do frequent oil changes, on these old diesels, they're not going to go a million miles. Now, number two and number three may be a little unfamiliar to you, but I'll share those a little bit later. But right now, I want to talk a little bit more about oil changes. Now, this video is specific to my recommendations on oil changes for old Mercedes diesels. It could apply to other old diesel engines. But once again, you're talking newer diesels, with modern injection systems, you're talking a different ball game here. You're talking different chemistry, different oils, different metallurgy. So I need to be clear, this just doesn't apply to all diesel engines. But you also need to understand that a lot of my opinion comes from having opened up a couple hundred old diesel engines and looking at them closely for wear, for signs of abuse, okay? So I wanna share with you my findings, my recommendations, and my opinion. So I have some props here on the workbench that can kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about and illustrate some of the things I'm going to recommend. From what I've seen working in and around these old Mercedes diesels for the last 20 plus years, I'm gonna say the number one thing that will kill a diesel engine is excessive piston ring wear and cylinder wall wear. Because when that happens, you have a whole cascade effect of problems. Not only do you have weak compression that makes the engine very hard to start, but you get an oil burner. And the oil burner also creates poor fuel combustion. And then you get fuel rinsing down the cellar walls and contaminating the oil, and on and on it goes. So if you want your engine to last, you have to protect the piston rings. Now what I have here on the bench is I have a piston and a crankshaft removed from a 1983 240D that had 180,000 miles on it. That, yes, that's correct, 180,000 miles on it and it died. It just was burning too much oil and in the cold weather, it did not have enough compression to start. And you're thinking, well, these Mercedes diesels are supposed to go a million miles. How could that wear out at 180,000 miles? Well, let me show you. And here's a piston that I removed from a 300D turbo that had 230,000 miles on it. And I'm gonna show you why I think it got frequent oil changes. Okay, this one didn't get oil changes, okay? Somebody neglected, and I know it's true from the previous owner of the car, but people think that, oh, I can just go five, 10,000, or maybe I'm lazy, or maybe I'll go 12,000 miles between oil changes. You may have just lost 50,000 miles off your diesel engine by running at 5,000 miles past an oil change, okay? Now let's take a closer look at these two pistons, and I wanna show you the difference, and then we're gonna take a look at this crankshaft, and I'll explain why I feel that piston rings are even more important than crankshaft bearings. First, let me show you up close the piston rings on this 240D piston that only had 180,000 miles on it. Couple things you're gonna note. Right away, you're gonna notice how shiny the rings are. Look at how shiny they are, indicating quite a bit of wear. You're also going to look at the amount of slop in the piston ring land on that top ring. So this piston is shot. See, the problem is once those rings start moving in the groove like that, it will accelerate wear, causing more oil to blow by. And here you can see evidence of the amount of oil that was blowing by the rings. Look at the carbon built up along the side of the piston there. And then the other thing, look at the side of the piston. You get scratching. See the scratching right in there? And I've even got a little bit of piston pinware 
So this is excessive. And this is very indicative of an engine that got neglected as far as oil changes. See the scratching there? Uh, see the wear in the piston rings, the slop in that top compression ring, the amount of oil carbon buildup along the sides of the piston there. Now we'll set that one aside and let's compare it with this 300D piston that came out of an engine with a lot higher mileage. First off, look at the rings. You see, you don't see a lot of shine in the ring. In fact, this middle ring here, you can still see some of the factory marks in it. And look at the side of the piston. You can still see the machine marks running horizontally across here. And then look at the top of the piston, how much cleaner it is. And then finally, this is the real cincher right here. Look at how tight the groove is in that top compression ring. So this piston might even be usable, although I do not recommend reusing old pistons when you're rebuilding a diesel engine. So this engine got maintained because at 230 to 250,000 miles, if it had not gotten regular oil changes, you would probably see a piston that looks like this or even worse. So now I want to show you the crank. See that? This is the crank that came out of that 240D engine. Now, notice the journals on the crank mains and the rods, they're like brand new. There's no scoring. So you see, the crank didn't suffer. Uh, it could have, but it didn't. These cranks are very robust. What you'll see is you'll see wear in the sprockets from lack of frequent oil changes. But primarily, once again, this is the killer right here. The piston rings and the cylinder walls that get excessive wear from neglect. Now with all this said, I want to share with you my recommendations for how often I change the oil in my diesel engines and what type of oil I recommend. So what do I recommend? I recommend engine oil changes every 3,000 miles. And I know you're thinking, well, on what basis, okay? Well, the basis comes from two things. Number one is the factory recommendation, and number two is my theory of risk management, <laughs> okay? The factory, by the way, recommended oil changes every 5,000 miles back in the 70s and 80s. So that was probably fine for an engine, a new engine. You know, you get up to 100,000 miles and the engine starts wearing, you may have to vary that a little bit. But I think that's fine if you have a very low mileage, a rebuilt diesel engine that's run, running very well, no oil burning, super compression, well fine, maybe every 5,000 miles is okay. But on these higher mileage diesels, and who doesn't have a higher mileage diesel a day? And I would say that's over 100 to 120,000 miles. I recommend 3,000 miles. And that's due to what I said earlier about piston rings, okay? Number one, it's all about the piston rings. You've got to protect those piston rings, okay? You don't know how many engines I've opened up over the years where that's what killed them right there. Uh, but number two, risk management. Okay, you look at it this way. What's the worst thing that could happen if I do it every 5,000 miles? What's the worst thing that can happen is if I do it every 3,000 miles? Well, I think you can answer that. Of course, if every 3,000 miles you may spend a little more money than you'd want to, but every 5,000 miles you might wear the engine out a lot sooner. So which is cheaper, all right, in the long run? I'll let you decide for yourself. Now, as far as oil, I recommend Dino Oil. I recommend either Chevron Bello or Shell Rotella. I'm not going to get into arguments about which is the best because I'd like to see if someone can prove which is the best. Both of these oils are specifically formulated for diesels and the contamination that gets into the oil from the problems that I discussed earlier, okay? I don't use synthetic and high mileage diesels. And you might say, well, why not? Well, I believe that because of the piston rings and the fact that we're trying to protect them, you need a very good seal on these rings. You need to make sure there's no unburnt fuel or excessive oil carbons getting by the rings and contaminating the oil. And I feel that Dino Oil provides a little bit better seal than, than synthetics because it runs a little thicker. And also, if you have an oil burner, I am all for you using a viscosity enhancer because once again, you want to protect the rings. <laughs> I know I'm sounding like a broken record, 
But I like to use Inch and Oil Saver by Lubramoly. That's my favorite one. But adding a viscosity enhancer to the oil so you up the thickness in layman's terms, that's going to prevent excessive oil from blowing by the rings. And it's also going to provide a little bit better seal to keep unburnt fuel and carbons from going the other way and contaminating your engine oil. Now, I'm sure some of you probably don't agree with me. You probably have your own favorite oil, and that's okay because it's your engine. It is your engine. You can do whatever you want and use whatever you want because it's yours. This is mine, okay? I would recommend, though, that whatever you do, you do it frequently because, in the end, the number one thing you want to protect in your old diesel engine are the piston rings and excessive cylinder wall wear.